Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Get ready to roll some dice. Today, we're going to learn how to generate random numbers in Microsoft Access VBA. We're going to use it to roll six-sided dice, and then we're going to use it to roll some ability scores for D&D characters. Ooh, ah. Okay, if you're interested in generating random numbers for any reason in Microsoft Access, there's two things you need to know. The randomize statement and the RND function. The randomize statement is used to initialize the random number generator in VBA. It essentially uses the system clock to give you a new seed value for the random number generator. Basically, it ensures that you don't get the same random numbers over and over again. I'll talk more about this at the end of the video. Then once you've initialized the random number generator, you can use the RND function to give you random numbers. Let's see how this works in our code. But before we get started, this is a developer level video. So if you've never done any programming in VBA before, go watch this video. It teaches you everything you need to know to get started in about 20 minutes. And go watch my status box video if you haven't seen it yet. I like to give information to the user in a status box, which is basically just a text box on a form to display information. It's like a print statement. Also, today we'll be using the int function to chop off the decimal part of a number. So go watch my rounding video. And optionally, go watch my create a function video. We're going to create our own function to return the result of a die roll. All right, so go watch this video too. These are all free videos. They're on my YouTube channel. They're on my website. Go watch those. Come on back. I'll wait for you. All right, so here I am in my tech help free template. This is a free database. You can download off my website if you'd like to. Let's go into design view and I'm going to slide this up here, make my status box a little bit bigger. And right here, we're going to go generate random. Okay. Now, right click build event. That'll bring up my code builder. Slide it over here. There we go. All right, we're in the hello world button click. That's fine. Now, the first thing I want to do is randomize my random number generator. So we're going to just type in randomize. Okay, what does that do? It initializes the random number seed. We'll talk a lot more about that at the end of the video. But basically, you're just you're you're shuffling the cards, okay, so to speak. Now we can use the RND, the random function, to return a random value. Let's see what that's look that looks like. Let's go status your number is colon and then rnd okay save it come back out here let's close it open it and click the button boom okay there you go 0 0.5327 all right okay let's get a couple more all right there's there's some random numbers okay now what rnd does is it returns a random value from 0 to 1 so it's not very helpful if you're trying to roll dice. So we got to do, do, do a little math to it. All right, let's start by multiplying this value by the maximum number that we want on our die roll. So if you want a six-sided die, a standard dice, uh, a standard die. I, dice is plural, die is singular. Okay, I got it, right? If you want a standard six-sided die, multiply it by six. If you want a 20-sided die, multiply it by 20. If you want a number from one to 100, multiply it by 100. All right, save it. Come back out here and roll some more dice. Okay. All right. Now we're getting values from zero, but up to and not quite including six. If you, if you roll enough of these, you'll see. Okay. Now, I don't ever want zeros. Pay attention to just the whole number part. Okay. Ignore everything after the decimal point. All right. I don't ever want zeros and I'm never going to get a six. So let's add one to this value. All right, come back in here, random number times six, let's put this in parentheses, plus one. Yes, I know, order of operations, multiplication goes first, but this makes it more readable to the user later or to you in the future, okay? I know you don't need the parentheses there, but it's good to have. All right, save it, let's go back over here, let's roll our dice some more. Okay, now I'm not seeing, I'm seeing some sixes and I'm not seeing any zeros. That's good, that's what I want, I want sixes, I want the bottom number to be one. All right, that's perfect. Now, last step, I'm gonna chop everything after that decimal place off. I don't wanna round it, I wanna just truncate it, chop it right off. 
And for that, we'll use the int function. So we'll take the int of this whole thing, int of this big thing right there. Okay. Int says, I don't care what's after the decimal place, just get rid of it. All right. Convert to an integer, basically. And now when I roll my dice, there we go. <laughs> I got three sixes in a row. That'd have been a good, good score right there. All right. Keep them going. Keep them going. One sixes, twos, five fours. Beautiful. You roll enough of them, you'll see that's what we want. If you want a 20-sided die, just change this to a 20, right? And now you should be getting numbers from 1 to 20. Okay, or 1 to 100 or whatever you want. Okay, so now we got valid dice rolls. Now, here's where rolling stats for D&D characters comes in. That's Dungeons & Dragons, for those of you who don't know. I, used to, I spent my youth playing this game. I love it. I uh, haven't played in many years, but... Uh, to do that, you're creating a fantasy character, and he's got he or she has six attributes: strength, intelligence, wisdom, dexterity, constitution, and charisma. And yes, that's the old school A D and D and basic D and D list. Uh, that's the order that I learned them, and that's the order we're keeping them in. You second edition fans, no, I don't even know what they're doing. They're up to like fifth edition now. I haven't even looked at a book in years. <laughs> Still got them all on my shelf, but <laughs> I haven't seen any of the new ones. All right, now, generating them like this every time becomes a bit of a hassle. So let's write our own function that'll return a die roll for us. Okay, so right here, we're going to make it. You can make it public if you want and move it into a global module. Public function, let's call it die roll max value as a long, and it will return a long. Okay, so it's going to take in the max value so you can use it to roll any kind of dice you want. All right, a six-sided, a 12-sided, four-sided don't step on the four-sided you gamers know what i'm talking about okay so send in the max value and then return a long integer which is your your number so here we're going to take this we're going to copy it and put it right in here and say die roll equals that and we're going to replace six with the max value look at that Burp. okay so the die roll the value that's returned the value of the function is this whole thing, a random number from one to whatever the max value is. Okay, now down here, we get rid of this and we say die roll six. Roll me a six sided die. Oh, Bentley, please bring forth the six sided dice. I wish to roll up a character. <laughs> Save it. Always good to throw in a debug compile once in a while. And then roll me some dice. There they are. Beautiful. Now, if you want to roll up multiple dice, just add them together right here. If you want to, if you want to say each ability score, like strength and intelligence, whatever, that's three D six or three six sided dice. So you're going to get a value from three to 18. You just say die roll six plus die roll six plus die roll six. Right now you're getting three D six. Ready? Go. These numbers should be now from 3 to 18 is the max. And it takes a while to see either a 3 or an 18. Did we just see a 3 go by? I'm not sure. That's the nice thing about the status box is I can scroll down to see the previous stuff. Did we get a 3 earlier? I think we did. No? Maybe? I don't know. Whatever. Okay. And if you want to now generate multiple stats, let's say that this one is strength. And we'll copy. And we'll go paste, 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 paste. Right, and put them in here. We got intelligence, wisdom, dexterity, constitution, charisma. Save it, click, go. And there's your stats. And that purdy. You want to clear it every time you run it, just come up here and say status box equals blank. Blank the box and then run. And every time you click on it, it's another character. Isn't that cute? Isn't that purdy? Now, if you if you built this database, save this. We're going to be using this in some future videos too. One of the reasons I'm recording this video is because I want to talk about for each next loops because I'm doing a loop series right now. And then I realized one of the good things that for each next is good for is looping through an array. And I haven't really covered arrays yet. So in order to do arrays, I want to do an example that fills an array with random numbers. And then I realized I got to really update my random number video because the last time I did it a few years ago, it was about generating random records, pulling re random records out of a table. But this is the random records video. And in this one, I do talk a lot more about random number seeds and that randomize function. 
right? There's pseudo random number generators, true random number generators. We talk about random seed values, how the seed value algorithm works. And in the extended cut, I do show you how to get a true random number from a web-based API. So there's lots more. If you're interested in random information, random records, random numbers, the random number generator seeds, go check this video out. I'll put a link to it down below. And of course, I talk about random numbers a lot in my Access Developer Level 3 class. All right, lots there too. If you want to have more fun with things like this, like dice rolling, like there's all kinds of stuff you can do. You can, you know, you can assign the values to the different stats. You know, you can have the, you can give the user six rolls and say, okay, you can put this one in, in dexterity, this one in strength. You can do different modifications of dice rolls, like roll four six-sided dice and drop the lowest one. There's all kinds of stuff you guys that you can do with this stuff. And uh, if you're interested in seeing more videos like this, let me know. I don't know how many gamer nerds I have out there watching my lessons, but uh, there's all kinds of cool stuff you can do if you're into this kind of stuff. So let me know. Post a comment down below. Say, yes, I want more dicey, nerdy, gamey stuff like this. And, you know, I'll start doing more stuff like this, too, because I like this kind of stuff. Okay. So, again, if you built this database with me today, hang on to it. We're going to use it for future videos again. But uh, for today, that's going to be your tech help video. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. And go roll some dice. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the video's up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, wanna get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, 
be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.